What's up everyone, Thrall's Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick and I have an album review for you. So yet another one that came out on the 26th of November was the newest album from Lockup, The Dregs of Hades. This comes out on Listenable Records. This is the band's fifth full length and this band was formed in 1998 by Shane Embry of Napalm Death and a whole bunch of other side projects outside of Napalm Death. And this is technically a super group as well. And the timeline on this one is kind of interesting. And this is probably one of the most different albums that Lockup has done, which they're just a straightforward death grind act, high energy in your face pretty much at all times. But this is the first time that they've done this with two vocalists. Now, returning to the band is longtime vocalist Thomas Lindbergh from At The Gates, Lurking Fear, Disfear, a ton of different projects. In fact, this almost completes the cycle, or at least the circuit, for Thomas Lindbergh fretted projects here lately because, man, that dude was fucking busy over the uh, pandemic. But when he left in 2014 and then just came back, I believe, this year or last year, he was replaced by Kevin Sharp, formerly of Brutal Truth. And instead of just replacing Kevin Sharp, they said, no, Kevin, you're staying in here because your vocals are sick as well. And me being a giant Brutal Truth fan, I was so much on board for that because yeah, two vocalists. Two vocalists that I love on the same album, going back and forth. Sounds like a damn good idea. Now rounding out this group, we have Anton Resenegger on guitars. He's from Bruhira. And we have their new drummer, Adam Jarvis of Misery Index, Scour, Pig Destroyer, Blast Beat Machine. This dude is one of my favorite extreme metal drummers, and he replaces longtime drummer Nicholas Barker, who is also a Blast Beat Machine but I guess left the group in 2020. Now, as I said, this band is pretty much no frills, death grind, and this is the high energy kind. Like, this is blast beats aplenty. You get some good groovy D beats here and there, some nice death metal breakdowns in between like grindy sections, and it's pretty much full on in your face uh, at all times. But first, because every album needs an intro track, apparently we have to get past an intro. Death Itself, Brother of Sleep. It's an intro track. It's uh, about like a minute 28. Uh, it kind of sounds like a more gothic version of Indiana Jones' Temple of Doom when they're down in the Kalima pit. And you don't necessarily need it. You can skip right on to the first actual track, Hell Will Plague with Ruins, and let's get to business. First off, Adam Jarvis was a solid pick for this. This is pretty much right in his wheelhouse because they just have him flying at all times. He is just going high octane blast beats with really great groovy sections in between and just pummeling the kit. And right away we are introduced to the new dynamic, the dual vocal dynamic on here. And honestly, it works out really well because both of these guys have distinctly different voices. Now, Thomas Lindbergh's vocals have kind of aged a bit, like he doesn't necessarily have as much power in here, but I think he sounds a little bit more direct on this, and I mean, if you're a longtime At The Gates fan, you know what he sounds like. And then Kevin Sharp sounds like a lunatic on here, but in a great way. Like, he is getting the nice gurgly deep vocals, kind of punky shouts, very raw and throaty as well. And what's cool is they'll bounce back from verse to verse, and this isn't just in the opening track, this is all over the album, and they'll also I don't want to call it harmonized because they're just growling together, but it creates this giant, nasty, layered growl, which just sounds extra vicious on here. Musically, this is very much lockup. Like, I mean, it's unmistakably them, but if you've never heard them, it is very comparable to Napalm Death because there are definitely a lot of Napalm Death riffs on here. Anton does a good job of kind of balancing out really cool, like, grindy, punky riffs and then, like, big, fat death metal chugs and tremolos. And overall, it really reminds me of what I'm playing in the background, which I don't know if you guys can hear, uh, Napalm Death's Enemy of the Music Business. It has that more death grind sound that I think is on that album, especially in terms of the guitar tone. It's kind of ugly and dissonant, but when they get down to just chugging on it, like it just sounds extra gnarly. Kind of similar to Terrorizer. Like Terrorizer is a great comparison, both in terms of the high octane drum work and just the fast, furious riffs that kind of switch back and forth between the styles. And in terms of like blending death metal and grindcore lockup has always done it really well. The song Black Illumination starts off with ferocious grindcore riffs, blast beats, 
They're fucking screaming back and forth. It's just loud and nasty and so pissed off. And then towards the end, it takes a hard shift to death metal, brings in some grooves, some really distinct riffs, and like just some flat out mosh pit worthy breakdowns. I like how that song did not stay kind of just straight ahead on one cell. Like a lot of these kind of just blast their way through, which is good because I like high energy stuff like that. This album is not fucking around. It pretty much has no breaks and it's going downhill almost the entire time here. But that is actually kind of fun just because I kind of like grindcore like that. Like, just keep going. Let's see how crazy you can get. But at the same time, deliver hooks, and that is what these guys do really well. The song Dead Legions actually has a slightly thrashier feel to it. And when they get down to the really cool, like, kind of groovy stomp towards the end, it really reminded me a lot of Nail Bomb. Like, it just kind of had that sort of... Max Cavalera found a nice, meaty riff and just hammered it to death and made you love it. And there's a nice bounce to it, so it's just really headbangable right away. Now, one thing I can definitely say about this album is it's very blended in terms of you don't necessarily always get songs that are more primarily death metal or more primarily grindcore. They blend the style. Now, you'll get songs that'll start off, again, like kind of grindcore-ish and move into death metal or vice versa, but for the most part, you get all the elements of death grind in pretty much every track. Now this album definitely lays on the blast beats. That's pretty much lockup style. So if you don't like blast beats, there's a good chance you probably don't like lockup. Though it does break it up a little bit with some DBs on A Sinful Life of Power and Triumph of the Grotesque. Both of those songs kind of latch on to the crust punk energy, though I do think they kind of get back into the blast beats a little bit too much, whereas I think those songs could have just been straight up like D-beat stompers because they did a really good job in there. And it's kind of a different energy than a blast beat. It's also a very different groove and almost kind of a different kind of mosh pit, which these songs are for mosh pits. Let's be completely honest about that. But one of the cool things that comes out in Triumph of the Grotesque is maybe just a touch of black metal. The punky chords kind of sound a little bit more dissonant with that guitar tone and there's just sort of a extra snarl to it. And when it does slow down, you know, a little bit, it kind of reminds me a lot of Celtic Frost, like early Celtic Frost. We're talking, you know, two Megatherian and Morbid Tales. And A Sinful Life of Power actually has some almost kind of blackened tremolo riffs in there. Those are kind of like the interchangeable ones where, yeah, that could be just straight up death metal, but there's that little bit of like a sinister sound that kind of makes it almost a little bit blackened. But either way, it's catchy, it's heavy, and it's kind of evil and all those things make uh, Extreme Metal more awesome for me. And honestly, as foot on the gas, full speed ahead this album is, there is one track in here that really kind of threw me for a loop just because it was so different. The last track, Crucifixion of Distorted Existence, could not be any more different than anything else in the album. It is easily the slowest song in there. It has an atmospheric lead-in, which I didn't mind because as much as I bitch about the intro, I feel like there could have been like maybe like a sample in between some of the tracks in here to kind of break them up more because it does kind of get a little one gear after a while, but it's kind of a fun gear to ride in, so not really complaining that much. But this last song slows it down, the riffs become more distinct, there is a distinct hook in this opening riff, and you really get to hear both Lindbergh and Sharp kind of bounce back and forth a little bit clear and they do a lot of layering on the vocals like both of them growling at the same time and sounding evil as fuck this song has an entirely different mood not only because it's slower but the riffs are just darker and more foreboding it's not about just being pissed off it's i don't know kind of evil sounding like a little morbid angelish and not only does it kind of sound like an almost different band on here the song is over six minutes which I believe is a record for Lockup. I think they had a longer song on the last one that was a little bit over five minutes, but six minutes, that's pretty good. And honestly, while it does sound a bit like a different band, it's really good. And it kind of just showcases there's a little bit more in the wheelhouse here. And I think that's kind of a thing on this album. Like it's a little bit different, but it's instantly recognizable as the lockup that I've been listening to since, shit, I think Pleasure's Paved Sewers. The rest of the song are very catchy. There's really cool harmonies in some of them too. And overall it caps off a really solid album. And I don't know, like part of me thinks like something like this should have been towards the middle of the album, or at least maybe some of the DB tracks should have just to break it up. But honestly, this was just a really good listen. Like it was just fast, hyper aggressive, pretty much what I expected from lockup though it did have some surprises. So overall, I'm gonna give this four stars. 
this is a badass album and again not necessarily like reinventing the wheel in terms of death grind but the fact that they added something different like two vocalists a couple of slower sections a little bit of blackened atmosphere here and there it kind of keeps this a little bit fresh but it also keeps it very recognizable i think getting adam jarvis on drums was a hell of a good move just because that dude is pretty much built for bands like this. And that dual vocal thing really makes this interesting because both of them, again, have distinctly different vocals and both contribute very well. Again, this is a band that if you're not looking for full tilt, high speed death grind, then you probably shouldn't listen to Lockup at all because that is exactly what they are and that really hasn't changed. So if you are a fan of that sort of thing, definitely check this out. This is no bullshit death grind. If you love that sort of thing, I strongly recommend picking up this album. And if you've never jammed Lock Up before, check out all their albums because literally all their albums are really good. So yeah, I strongly recommend this one. Go check it out. So if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there will be links down below. We also have t-shirts for sale. We are going to eventually reload on stuff and get some different merch. We're getting some input from the fans and we're welcoming more input in terms of stuff that you guys would like because the stuff is for you after all. But if you would like a shirt for now, hit us up on thrallsmetal at gmail.com. Send us a message, put shirts in it, we will get back to you and hopefully sell you a shirt. Got plenty more coming in the future. We can't wait to overload you with more metallic nonsense from us because we love this shit and we love doing this for you guys because you guys seem to love that and ah, fuck, we love that. It's very confusing. It's kind of a love triangle trio. It's a shape. Anyway, thank you all for watching once again. We will catch you later.